A warm good evening to each one of you. Thank you, Southern singers, um, for the wonderful rendition of those beautiful numbers. We've been immensely um, benefited from those beautiful singing, not just the tune, but also the words that goes along with that. And thank you so much uh, for even making us sing along in the last uh, number, one of the one of the beautiful uh, hymns of the early church. Let's just bow down and look up to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come at your presence, Lord. Thank you for being there as we sang, as we listened to your servants singing, as we listened to your word. We ask you that you would speak to us. Cover me, Lord, and you would speak to your children. May the words of my mouth, the meditations of all our hearts, be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. We're celebrating Children's Day, November 14th, and uh, this week the church is celebrating Children's Sunday. It so happened in 1952, all the way in, I want to take you to Seoul, South Korea. During that time, 1952 was the Civil War, and it so happened that the U.S. Army was there in Seoul. There was this one pastor whose name was Reverend Everett, who actually was there in the army with those um, at the forefront, who was there as a chaplain of the army. It was so cold, I'm sure, so th those of you who have been, um, you know, to the winter time in South Korea, it's really, really cold. So he was having a, a jacket, and then he was there, um, you know, at the, near the regiment, and um, it so happened that a small boy just pulled his coat and just ran. This man, this pastor, just ran behind this boy. He ran into those small little streets and somehow hid himself in a place, it is a hallway. This pastor, out of curiosity, just went behind him to just check what exactly this guy is doing. And this boy just went and just covered himself in that hallway and the pastor just went behind him and he saw this boy. The moment he realized it was not just, just one boy there, there were so many of those small boys who were affected in the war, who did not know what to do, who were shivering in the cold and they wanted these kind of blankets and though somehow, you know, he just pulled over the coat from this pastor and this ran. Of course, pastor got him some bread and some hot soup during those days. And then he understood, though he did not, was not able to talk to them, those small Korean boys, he could not talk to them, but he understood that they were in real big cold. And so he got them some food and he left for the day. The next day he was so curious because when he woke up, he saw the army trucks just passing by. And there were some kind of bags those people were clearing up. The soldiers were clearing up those bags. And he just went closer to just see what those bags are. And he just did notice it was the bodies of a few children who could not make it that evening in that severe cold. Some children could make it, some children could not. He was so touched by compassion. And so that is probably a time where God spoke to Reverend Everett Swanson and therefore He's, he kind of could not sleep for the next one week. When he went back, you know, those days it was not the, the Airbus, it was a flight which had so much of noise, the ATRs. 
and that sound of the the flight when he sat down inside he just kept telling him what are you going to do what are you going to do what are you going to do and he could not really contain himself so he went back he started to kind of talk to his friends and that was starting of an organization called compassion international and i'm part of that compassion international and today i've been serving in this organization for almost 19 years the mission of compassion is releasing children from poverty in jesus name and i think we can never release a children from poverty without jesus name if if so you know there could have been so many ngos so many governmental organizations we had enough and more schemes that our government and the non governmental organizations have been really working on but the root cause if it is not touched poverty can never be you know elevated we believe that root cause of poverty is nothing but the sin what can government uh, what can the schemes do about the sin unless the foundation is touched unless the sin has been touched on you know children cannot be released from poverty dl moody when he finished his uh, uh, crusade he went back he went back to his wife his wife was waiting to hear from him how the how the convers how the convention went how the conference went and for a question that his wife asked how many people accepted jesus christ dl moody said two and a half so his wife asked a, a question again oh so you mean two adults and one child half two two and a half two adults and one child but dl moody said no it's two children and one adult adults have already crossed their age children have a long long life to live church children are a gift from god children are a gift from god in tamil we call it as kartral varum sudandiram what a powerful word it is pilligal kartral varum sudandiram karpathin kani avaral kidaikum palan what a joy to kind of really have children in our midst and therefore every child in this entire world is created for a very very clear purpose very very clear purpose in fact each of us in our in god's uh, you know institution of marriage you know he we have children and every child if you are thinking is your child i'm sorry to say that they are not your children they have been just given to us for a short period of time children have been given to us for a very short period of time it is our responsibility to give them back to god we have been you know receiving the children from god how do we give them back to god do we give them as pure and holy or are we giving to god you know children who have been not growing in faith god commands children to be nurtured in faith today as parents as grandparents as brothers you know with different relationships we are here seated listening to god's word on this children's sunday how do we nurture them in deuteronomy you know 6 it verses 6 and 7 you know there have been clear instructions that is given to the israelites make sure you know you tie it you know make sure that you tie the word on their forehead you know on their wrist wherever they go and when they go and when they come back bring all the words to you know the children children will have to remember how god brought them out of the egypt how do we nurture children as i had mentioned more than us i think god has a huge responsibility and jesus you know has a big big responsibility to bring up the children in the way of the lord it's not about yes it definitely counts us as parents as brothers or as the sisters to bring up a child but 
A child must personally choose to follow Christ in terms of their own faith. It is a personal choice. It cannot be forced on any children. Children's ministry consultant Julie Kurz paradoxically says this, the faith of your children is all about you, but not about you at all. Let me repeat it. It's a paradoxical statement. The faith of your children is all about you, but not about you at all. The part of not about you at all is a, you know, talks about the mysterious work of the Holy Spirit that convinces, that convicts, and also converts the child so that they can get into a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. It's the work of the Holy Spirit. But at the same time, the part that it's about you is telling a child about Jesus in a way that helps them. We have the responsibility. That's the reason why we have a Sunday school. We have a responsibility to tell the child or to equip the child that helps them to enlarge or envision their faith in Christ. Our role as a church, as parents, is to facilitate a child's transformation by making it so meaningful for them. And that's the reason why we have Sunday school and the syllabus and uh, the kind of nurturing that is happening in the Sunday school is to facilitate child's transformation. I'm here to kind of share with you about like six suggestions or points that helps in nurturing our children. As grandparents or as parents, we've got to kind of really understand that these are the ones which help us in nurturing our children's faith. Number one is live for Jesus. Number one is live for Jesus. Fostering, you know, uh, children's faith doesn't believe or doesn't begin with the child. It begins with the parents. Parents have to live for Jesus and that is when the child will know and be able to see how to live for Jesus. If we do not have, how can we give it to our children? If we don't live in Christ, how can we just tell our children to live in Christ? We must examine ourselves first to kind of see, do we have an authentic relationship with Jesus Christ? Do we love the Lord with all our heart, with all our soul and all our mind? Luke chapter 10 verse 27 talks about that. Love the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength and with all your mind. And love your neighbor as yourself. What are, this, is some, this is the commandment that has been concised. Love the Lord and love your neighbor. Are we able to kind of exercise this? Are we practicing this? Are we able to kind of really be filled with the spirit in exercising the faith? Children notice the parents' actions. More than what the parents say, they notice parents' action. The saying goes like this, your walk talks, your talk talks, your walk talks is louder than your talk talks. Whatever you talk, it can probably go to an extent, but your actions are louder than your words. Children could, should be able to see the love of Jesus in us. Are we able to kind of reflect Jesus to the children in our house? Last week we did talk about Jesus being the light. You know, Jesus being the light. And I think it actually starts at home. Are we able to reflect Jesus first to our children, then probably to the world around us? In 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 4 and 5, it says like, if a person cannot take care of his own household, how can he take care of the church? How can he lead the church? It starts with the home. It starts with the house. Children's, children will be able to kind of open up their hearts if they are able to see Jesus, you know, with their parents. Number one, live for Jesus. Number two, love your spouse. Love your spouse. Does it really kind of connect with children? Of course. A healthy marriage is part of God's plan. You know, marriage is the only institution that was constituted by God. 
And that's where it's, the Satan is so careful in terms of destroying marriage. If he can destroy marriage, he can destroy the church. If he can destroy the church, he can just destroy the community. Marriages are very, very important in God's plan. And that inspires our children's faith. A strong marriage will reflect on a strong child having a faith in Christ. When a husband and wife love and respect each other, their relationship will reflect a source of security for their children. Children will be secure when, he, when they see that husband and wife are respecting one another, are loving one another. When the children feel secure, that is when they will have faith like their parents. We need to love our spouse in sowing, doing so. We create an environment, a conducive environment for our children to connect with Christ's child's faith. So if we are looking at nurturing our children, Malachi I'm sure that we actually love 15, our spouse. We see that like, you know, we belong Number to three, him in body and we spirit. talked about and what does the, Jesus, one, the one God Number two. Seek. We talk about um, love so your be spouse. On your, the third God one, and do not listen your wife to your children. Your youth. Listen to your children. Very clearly, children, we see that know, may not the listen relationship to what we say about husband Jesus and a wife unless we translates directly to listen, listen to them. I'm not talking about hearing them. There's a big difference between hearing and listening. Listening is a posture of humility. David, you know, Bennett from Luzon Movement. He says that listening is a posture of humility. When I listen, I'm admitting I don't know everything about what you think. No, that is not what I'm talking about. Listening actually goes beyond hearing. Not just hearing to the words, but also observing their uh, physical gestures, the body expressions. It, also, it, it combines together and that is what active listening is all about. Includes verbal and non-verbal gestures, messages. And so when we listen with attentiveness and empathy, you know, children are able to kind of also come closer to Jesus. Proverbs 22, 6, it says, And listen, not to judge or to condemn, but to rightly direct and encourage your child in the way of the Lord. And so train up a child in a way he should go. Even when he's old, he will not depart from it. Children are always like wet cement. You know, that's the reason why D.L. Moody says they are one full person. They have a long life to live. You know, they are wet cement. Whichever way that you mold them, they will become like that. There's also a Tamil proverb, Anjal Valayada, Dambadil Valayada. So I think... Children, we need to really give them that importance that we need to, you know, make sure that we listen to them. And today the children have, are in a completely different generation. I don't think even uh, youth are able to kind of really comprehend uh, some of those things that the children are having in terms of even the language. And it is changing. It's, it keeps changing. The Gen X, Gen Z, all of them. So Alpha there's so many generations after generations and I think we've got, to slow, we've got to kind of really listen to them. Not about just advising and just uh, telling them what to do, but also to kind of really have a posture of listening, which actually indirectly has a posture of humility in terms of um, admitting that we don't know everything. You know, they still know something. Let's hear from them. We talked about... Uh, the first one, live for Jesus, love your spouse. Third one is listen to your children. The fourth one, lead wisely. Lead wisely. We need to have a spiritual discernment in terms of like, you know, parents will have to know when you act on and when you get away so that the Holy Spirit can act on. We need to know when to discipline, when to kind of allow them to learn by themselves. And it's good you know, definitely we need to have a lot of non-negotiables, a lot of boundaries, Bible reading, you know, prayer. Um, these are all biblical values and beliefs we, supposed to, we are supposed to teach our children. But at the same time, we need to also understand 
that you know there is also god's grace involved in all of these it is not just only us it also you know involves god's grace sometimes we kind of really be there at the, as a stumbling block when god wants to act on our children we sometimes you know do not hinder let not let us let us as parents not hinder when a uh, when when the holy spirit is you know working in the lives of our children we need to understand that like you know it is not just us always you know that we are nurturing our children god is even more interested in our children he very clearly like you know uh, has a very clear purpose as i had already mentioned for every child dl moody i know that i'm quoting dl moody because he was one person who was so very clear about the purpose of children he just ran behind a boy until like you know he just went into a bed and the story just says that like you know he pulled the legs of the child from that bed underneath indirectly he was saying that i am pulling this guy, child from hell i want to kind of bring the child away from hell children are moving towards that direction children have a lot of things that have been influenced by the world the world has actually been really influencing our children in school in neighborhood you know sometimes even in church the negative influence i'm talking about so therefore as church as parents godly parents we are supposed to make sure that we lead our children wisely we lead our children wisely the fourth uh, the fifth one is labor in prayer labor in prayer and i know that okay, that each of us have this very important aspect in each of our lives we pray we practically demonstrate to our children in prayer that we trust god completely when we pray before our children we are just saying that lord we completely trust you children will be able to see that when there is a need for them they will be able to depend not on people or not on others but to depend on god that's how we actually have to kind of really help them understand that we completely depend on god prayer you know jabam illada veedu koora illada veedu and imagine a house without roof everything is going to be challenged and i think we need to pray earnestly for our children and um, prayer definitely fuels faith in the life of our children so pray with the scriptures and i think it's a good for us to kind of have our family altars on a regular basis so that our children will be nurtured in god's faith and finally i want to close with the word of linked together the last one linked together nurturing children of course is not a solo affair it's just not one person's affair it takes this morning we heard our pastor saying it takes a village to raise a child it takes a complete village to raise a child ideally what i'm trying to tell here is a child's faith formation requires four way collaboration four way collaboration one is jesus we need jesus we need the child we need the parents we need the church it's a four way collaboration even if one of these is missing it is challenging i think a child child chooses to follow christ by faith and therefore christ is very very in very very important aspect of the child's faith a child is very important as well a child is definitely you know uh, one who actually wants to kind of make sure that the relationship with christ relationship with the church relationship with the parents is so critical a four way collaboration a church also encourages and equips parents and children to live by faith to live by faith we we kind of really talked about living for jesus live for jesus love your spouse listen listen to your children lead wisely let us let us not be a stumbling block block before god and our child lead wisely labor in prayer prayer and link together we need to be linked together as a church we have been really very careful in terms of bringing up um children in the way of the lord even this morning i was talking to uh, um an, an elder elder of our church and he said he was so proud to say that my children right from 
the young age, they have been in the Sunday school of Egmore Wesley Church. And today, they are all, you know, in the Lord because of the foundations that as Sunday school we have been providing them. Of course, church is a very important aspect as well in the life of a child. Church is an ordained institution that God had created and He has actually kind of made sure that the church is also responsible not just for spiritual development, but also in terms of parental development, in terms of like the community development, in terms of the social evils across us. It is our responsibility as a church to kind of address these. May the Lord bless these words for us and let's look up to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for talking to us this evening. Lord, you know our hearts, you know our challenges that we have in our lives, Lord. But we know that, Father, that you care for us and you lead us through, Lord. As we leave this church, we pray that, Lord, that your word will continue to, Lord, be sown deep inside our hearts, that it may bear fruit, good and much fruit. And, Lord, we thank you for the word, and we pray that you would continue to, Lord, be with us in this entire service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.